Hey guys, welcome to the video. So it's been a while since I've done a video like this, but there's a few important things I'd like to talk about today. So nine things that stop you getting success on your diet. And these are really common things that I see over and over again, especially number eight, where I'm gonna be talking about how the way you do your diet actually links into your stress as well. So that's really important. And before we jump in, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, so consider doing so below. I talk about so many things on emotional eating and having long-term dieting success where in the past you might have failed. So let's now jump straight into the video. So the first thing that most people do that stops them getting long-term success on the diet is what I call rules-based dieting. Now rules-based dieting is basically having rules to follow to lose weight. So different diets have different rules, but the objective of each of them is to reduce your calories, to put you into a calorie deficit so you're losing weight. So I'll give you some examples. Slimming World asks you to count points and different foods are assigned different points. Calorie counting asks you to count calories and log and weigh your food. Shake diets require you to replace a meal with a shake. Fasting, you cut out food for certain periods of the day. Keto diet, you cut out carbs from your diet. So you see all these are different rules to achieve the same thing, reducing your calories, okay? Now the problem is, these rules are created to make dieting simpler. So simple things to follow so that you can get quick success. Going back to the examples, counting points or counting calories or cutting out food for certain periods of the day, cutting out carbs, things like that. Now the problem with rules-based dieting is that when you feel you can't follow the rules, you end up doing nothing at all because you don't know what else to do. So it creates these big swings of when you can be perfect, you're on the diet, totally on the diet, but when you can't follow those rules, then you're totally off the diet. There's nothing in between. So this leads to total inconsistency. Because let's face it, how often does your day go to plan? All our days are unpredictable, right? So things happen, you forget your lunch, someone's ill, someone gives you some chocolate or offers you some cake, someone invites you around for a meal, you run out of food in your fridge, something you usually eat is not available, you get extra hungry for some reason, the kids are playing up, the dog was sick on the carpet, all these kind of things and more. So in these situations with rules-based dieting, it's very easy to say F it and kind of just have the day off, eat whatever is available and then say I'll start again tomorrow. Again, this is totally inconsistent and you're not going to get results long term. The solution to this, instead of rules-based dieting, pattern-based dieting. So measuring food in the simplest possible way, learning to make quick and easy meals, having a meal three to four times a day so you're full and nourished, and also being aware of what's coming up in the next few weeks so you can adjust for the lifestyle. But also, because you don't have this black and white mindset of totally on the diet or totally off the diet, you work in the gray area of, I do the best I can in the moment based on what I have. And this way, you might not be 100% all the time, Time, but at least you can be 70, 80, 90% and still be getting results rather than totally on, but then totally off the diet all the rest of the time. And that leads me into number two. So number two is treating the diet like a project. So a lot of people will wait for a period of time where they can be totally on it and totally perfect with their diet. They treat it like this window of time, a few months, where there might not be anything happening, no holidays, no parties, no events. So they feel that all obstacles are out of the way. And then they go extreme and deprive themselves because they know this is a temporary period of time to get the quickest results as possible. There's a few problems with this. Firstly, when that project period comes to an end, you basically just go back to how you were eating before because you've learned nothing about how to do life while dieting. And also you start to resent the process because you've taught yourself it's this horrible process that you've put yourself through where you have nothing you like and you do nothing you like, but because you hate yourself so much, you felt it was necessary. And so doing dieting like this, it will lead to yo-yo dieting. You'll be on the diet for a few months, get some results off the diet, then back on the diet for your whole life. And I speak to so many people who do this. The solution is understanding you have to change for the long term and making the diet as simple and easy as possible to follow. But at the same time, being fully aware of what these changes bring to your life, the value and amazing things that you're getting in your life because of these changes, how you will be as a person, how your life will change, how everything will evolve. So instead of being driven by all the things you don't want, all the horrible things, I hate myself, I don't like how my life is, I don't like how I feel, what am I gonna get by changing these things and becoming this new person? And that is exciting rather than, oh, I have to do this because I'm obliged to do it because I hate myself. Having an exciting enough reason to get up every day and live this new life. 
rather than treating it like a temporary project. And number three, slightly related to this, is that most people wait till after the weekend, so Monday, to start their diet. The reason is because on the weekend, there's a lot of things going on, routine is out, and there's a lot of things that you might want to eat and enjoy on the weekend. The problem with this is you have avoided all the obstacles that you need to learn from on the weekend. So yes, from Monday to Thursday, you might be okay, totally on the diet, but then when Friday, Saturday, and Sunday come around again, you struggle and you often make mistakes and feel bad, feel guilty, and then start again on Monday. What really needs to happen is you need to start on a Friday and you need to learn from the obstacles. You might not make the right choices straight away, but you need to be aware of what's the actual problem, get feedback from it, and so the next time you do better and evolve like that, rather than avoiding the things you really need to learn from, like the weekend or Christmas or other events, which is so, so important to discover your blind spots and things you don't realize. And number four, perfectionism mindset, black and white mindset, on the diet, off the diet. So I've touched on this before. Most people do dieting in this very black and white fashion where they are either totally on the diet or totally off the diet. The reason is they don't know how to do anything in between. This gray area, which I mentioned before. So you're either following all the rules on your diet to the latter and not doing anything else, or when something else does happen that gets in the way, you end up just having this big swing to doing nothing rather than doing the best you can. And the solution is that, is taking it away from trying to be perfect all the time and doing the best you can in the moment and learning how to deal with unpredictability and things that you might not be expecting. And the reason people do this is that it's harder to work in this gray area. You make mistakes, but you learn from them. It takes a little bit longer, but you learn from it. Rather than trying to be perfect, get some good results to start with, but then all this unpredictability making you just completely swing in the opposite direction and get zero results. So consistency and doing the best you can in the moment, working in the gray area, gets long-term results. And this applies to things like going on holiday. How often have you gone on holiday and thought, there's no way I'm gonna be on a diet when I'm going on holiday. So you go from completely on the diet to completely off the diet. Whereas in actual fact, you could have been working in this gray area, still enjoyed yourself, but still being consistent and got results. And number five is to do with motivation. So most people are driven to diet because of what we call push motivation. It's what you don't want. It's the pain of being in the current situation you're in. So things like, I don't like myself. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the way people look at me. I don't like the health implications of my current life. All these things, I don't like not being able to wear the clothes I want, the, the negative emotions, the impact on my job, the impact on my relationships, the impact on everything. And these are all the negative reasons. This creates a lot of pain and frustration and negative emotions. And so you feel obliged to do a diet. You're pushed into it because of your current situation. You feel there's no other option. And just a side note, this is what makes you make crazy choices and do extreme diets. But it also makes you hate the process because you're doing it through obligation and you're doing something you don't really want to do. You wouldn't have chosen to do it otherwise. And there comes a time when you do lose a little bit of weight and you feel better, that the motivation goes away because all these things that are affecting you, not liking yourself, the confidence, etc., there's now less pressure on you because you feel a little bit better. And so those old habits start to slip back in and you reverse your progress. So this creates this yo-yo dieting effect again. You push to do something, starting a diet, getting some results, feeling better, slipping back into the old habits. Now the solution to this is having the other side of motivation. What do you actually want? How will your life be when you change? What's the exciting reason to undergo this process, to make these changes in your life? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? How will your life be in every area? Your health, relationships, your career, everything. What clothes will you wear? What will you do? What will you do that you're not doing now? And so using this as motivation and aiming towards this, when the motivation of feeling better because your pain has gone down, you have the motivation of this amazing life you're aiming towards and starting to get these amazing things that you never dreamed you'd have and never considered you'd have before. And this is what makes you get up every day and just really have this focus and drive to want to continue with this new lifestyle. And I'm interested, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been on the diet totally, totally perfect and then something's happened so you're totally off the diet? and you either start again the next day or the next Monday after the weekend. Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to know what's happened to you. 
And number six, again, I've touched on this, but feeling obliged to do the diet, you're doing it out of obligation, you're being pushed into it. And this makes you want to do something as quick as possible to get it over with. You don't want to be doing it forever. And so you resent the process. You start to hate it. And again, you treat it like a project, something that will be over. And all these points start to link back into each other. So when the motivation goes down because you hate the diet, you stop doing it and you slip back into old habits. And this one is a deeper topic because it can often lead into self-worth. If you don't feel enough and you don't feel worthy and you feel that weight loss is going to be a solution to that, then again, you want results as quickly as possible to feel enough. And so you start doing crazy diets, crazy things, extreme things, things that are unsustainable. But to be a success in this situation, you have to work on self-worth. You have to grow your self-worth independently and then pursue the diet because you want to and because you can and accept that this is the way you want to live because of the amazing abundance and changes you can bring to your life that you can only dream of and now these things are within your grasp and it's exciting. It's exciting to work towards them. And number seven is treating the symptoms rather than the cause. So what I mean by this is weight gain is often a symptom of a bigger problem. Let me explain. So a lot of people have learned that food is a quick and easy way to change the way they feel. And so if they don't know how to manage their feelings, manage their state, overstressed, all these kind of things, and you're using food to make you feel better, then the symptom is the weight gain. The actual problem is all the stress and knowing how to manage your emotions and all these problems in your life. The weight gain has resulted because of that, because you're using food, comfort food, emotional eating to make yourself feel better. So if you are working on the symptom, the weight gain, but all these problems are still there, you're going to get short term results because it's going to be a battle. You're going to lose some weight, but all these problems are still there. So it's going to be constantly wanting to push back on. And it's that constant tug of war where it feels so much effort and it's very easy to slip. Imagine a bucket and it's got a load of holes in it and there's water pouring into it from a tap. Now you plug the holes with something like corks and they keep popping out all the time and the water keeps going everywhere. The solution to this is not trying to keep plugging the holes, trying to fix it, working on the symptoms, it's switching off the tap. And that's what I mean by working on the stress, working on the negative emotions, working on this emotional eating which you use to medicate yourself. And this leads into number eight, which is really important. The way most people do dieting, like counting points, weighing foods, counting calories, all these things are overkill and add stress to your day. If you currently use food to reduce stress in your day, then the paradox is the diet you are doing is leading back into this stress, making this circle. So the food part of your diet needs to be as simple as possible. The measuring of it needs to be as simple as possible. The thinking about it needs to be as simple as possible. So you're not creating extra unnecessary stress, which is linking back into the emotional eating problem. And I'm really interested. Let me know in the comments, does the way you do dieting whatever way it is, stress you out? Does it cause a lot of thinking in your mind which adds more stress to your day? Let me know down there. And then finally, number nine is being motivated by the results, the numbers on the scale, rather than what you're aiming for. Because when you step on the scale, how predictable is that number? It's not, right? It could be up, it could be down, it could be the same. And if you are relying on that number to make you feel happy, then there's a big chance you're gonna feel sad if it's not the number you want to see. So you don't want to create a situation where you're relying on something external you have no control over to dictate how you feel in your day. You want your motivation to be attached to the life you want, the reason you want to change. And that's why you need to be so aware of what you want and what you're aiming for, why you're doing all this, why you want to lose weight, why you want to change in great detail. So how will your life be when you lose weight? in every single way. How you feel, your look, what you do, your relationships, your career, everything in great detail. Picture it in your mind. Who will be there, what sounds are there, the colors, the size of the image, the movement in the image, all the things make a vivid detailed picture in your mind that motivates you and excites you rather than stepping onto the scale and thinking, oh, damn, not again the weight hasn't gone down. And then the repercussions of that, you start to medicate that feeling with food again, and it links into this cycle. 
And out of interest, again, let me know in the comments, has that happened to you? Have you ever stepped on the scale and then thought, F it, I've just put all this work in, work so hard and not getting results. I may as well just eat what I want because it's the same, right? So this is why you go backwards unnecessarily. So guys, these are nine reasons why people often don't get results with their diet. I'm really interested to know which one of these really stands out for you. Is there something that you want to learn more about? Something that you didn't really know was a problem? Something you think, ah, oh, that's what I need to do? Let me know below. So guys, that is it. And before I go, I've got something interesting I was thinking about. So I really want to put a lot of this stuff into a small course for a, a low price for people to be able to learn and understand more about themselves, be able to get better success with their diet. Is that something you're interested in? If it is, I'm gonna put a link to sign up to my email list. And if I get enough interest, I will start putting this course together. When it's ready, I will send you an email about it. So you know all about it, how it will work. And no obligation as well, you can think whether it might be something you wanna do. So that link is down there in the description. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful day. Any questions, feel free to ask me and see you in the next video.